Hi everyone. So this is part three of our ACT practice test that we're taking. Um, if this is the first video you're watching, you can go to my channel and see parts one and two. And as I'm going through this, I have linked where to find this test in the description. Once again, these aren't my problems. I'm not affiliated with ACT. I'm just doing these to help. And I have already circled all the correct answers according to the ACT key. So we make sure we're getting back to the correct answer. Let's go ahead and start. Number 16, what is the value of X that satisfies this equation? So this is just a typical multi-step equation. So go ahead and distribute. Negative three times four X is negative 12 X. Negative three times negative five is positive 15. 2 times 1 is 2, and 2 times negative 5x is negative 10x. Now go ahead and move over your x's to one side and your non-x's to the other. So I'm going to get rid of subtraction with addition, and this addition over here with subtraction. So negative 12 plus 10x is negative 2x. These are gone. Equals... 2 minus 15 is negative 13. Those are gone. And now divide each side by negative 2, since they're being multiplied here. x equals negative 13 over negative 2. And we know that a negative divided by a negative is a positive, which gets us answer letter K, 13 over 2. Number 17, in the right triangle ABC shown below, the given lengths are in millimeters. What is the sine of A? So you probably learned something called SOHCAHTOA in, I think, Algebra 2. It's like a trig um, lesson. So S stands for sine, which is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So it wants to know what the sine of A is. So here's angle A. So I'm going to go and write sine of A equals, so we want the length opposite of the angle, which is directly across, 7 over the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always across from this right angle, 9. So the sine of A is 7 over 9, which is letter D. Number 18, this is a exponent problem. So we have 27 over 64 to the negative 2 thirds. There's so many ways to start this problem. Um, I'm just going to start it where I see first. The first thing I see is a negative exponent, and I always like to get rid of those first. So to get rid of a negative exponent, you just flip what is inside. So I'm going to go ahead and flip 27 over 64 to 64 over 27. So now I have 64 over 27 to the 2 thirds. Now let's go ahead and deal with this 3 on the bottom. That stands for taking the third root of something. So I want the third root of 64 over the third root of 27 squared. So let's go ahead and take the third root of 27. And so, or you can do 64 first. It doesn't really matter what you do first. Um, you can do that on your calculator if you don't know it off the top of your head. Just look for the button. Um, so the third root of 64 is going to be what? 4 times 4 is 16 times 4, 4. And the third root of 27 should be 3. And that's squared. And then put that squared to each one. 4 squared is 16 over 3 squared is 9. So we get our answer, letter J, 6 over 9. All right, Lodo begins at his back door and walks 8 yards east, 6 yards north, 12 yards each, 
east and five yards north to the barn door. How many yards less would he walk if he could walk directly from the back door to the barn door? So I'm just going to start here. Here's Lodo. This is where he's starting. Okay, he walks eight yards east. So there's eight yards. Then he goes six north. This is not going to be to scale, obviously. <laughs> um, 12 yards east. 12 yards. And another five yards north. So he walked a total of, add all those up, eight plus six plus 12 plus five. So he walked a total of 31 yards. So they want to know, well, how many yards less would he have walked if we just did a straight line from here to here? And we have triangles and they're right triangles. So to find this side, let's use the Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to do that work over here. So six squared, a squared, plus b squared, eight squared, equals c squared. Six squared is 36. 8 squared is 64 equals x squared. We have 36 plus 64. That's me 100. To get rid of square, you take the square root. So x equals 10. So this is 10. And now we need to find this x. Let's do the same thing. 5 squared plus 12 squared equals x squared. 25 plus 144 is equal to x squared. 144 plus 25 is 169. And to get rid of a square, you take the square root. So x equals 13 there. So if he had just walked in straight across in a straight line instead of just, you know, going east, north, east, north, he would have walked 23. The difference between... 31 and 23 is 8. So see, they want to trick you by finding 23 and they want you to pick C because they think, oh, they're just going to find like how long, how many yards he would have walked if he had gone straight. So make sure you read the actual problem. It says about how many yards less would he walk. So make sure you always read the problem. They, Whenever there's a multiple choice test, I feel like people love to just write tricky questions. All right, for a given set of data, the standard score Z, corresponding to the raw score H, is given by Z equals X minus, that symbol is called mu, over sigma, where mu is the mean of the set and sigma is the standard deviation. If, for a set of scores, mu is 78 and sigma is 6, which of the following is the raw score X, corresponding to Z equals 2? All right, so all we're going to do is plug everything in. So let's plug this into the mu, this into the sigma, and this into the z. And then you just solve for x. x minus 78 over 6. So first I need to get rid of this division sign. I'm going to do that by multiplying. 2 times 6 is 12. Those go away. Undo subtraction with addition. X equals 90. So letter F. In the figure below, A, B, C, and D lie on the circle centered at O. Which of the following does not appear in the figure? So in this triangle right here, it looks like I have a 90, 45 degree, 45 triangle because it's centered in a circle. This one over here is at an angle of 60, so that means this is 60 and this is 60. So we do have an acute triangle, and acute triangle is when um, you have all the lengths are under 90, so we don't have cross it out. Equal lateral or when all the sides are the same. This triangle, ABO, all the sides are the same because 
if all the angles are the same, that means the side lengths are also the same. So we can cross off equilateral. Isosceles means two sides are the same, which we have because look, 45 and 45, that means those two sides are the same. And we have a right triangle because there's a 90 degree angle there. So that leaves us with a scalene not appearing in the figure. A scalene triangle just means that all the sides are different lengths. All three sides are different lengths. So that would be letter F. So a little process of elimination there. 22, what is the slope of a line in the standard coordinate plane that is parallel to x plus 5y equals 9? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get this in y equals mx plus b form because I need to figure out what my slope is. So I'm going to move the x over here. And remember, that's like an invisible 1 there. So you can put that 1 in front if that confuses you. Negative 1x. And that's a positive 9. I'm just trying to leave the x in the front so it matches here. And then I got to get y alone by undoing this multiplication with division. And you'll multiply e or you'll divide every term by that. So y equals negative 1 fifth x. And this last number is just the intercept, so you don't really have to worry about that because we're only concerned about the slope. Now, parallel lines, they have the exact same slope. So the slope of this line is negative 105. So the slope of another line parallel will be also negative 1 over 5. Because parallel lines, like if I drew two parallel lines here, you know, it's rise over run. So like, oh, up 1 over 1 up one over one. That's why they never cross because their slopes are exactly the same. And last one, given that y equals x over x minus one and x is greater than one, which of the following is a possible value of y? Well, we know that none of our y's can be negative and that is because x is greater than one. So if we had a negative number to be x, and you can try plugging in a negative number, then it would not be greater than 1, which is what they're asking. And something has to be negative, an x has to be negative for y to be negative. And you can do that by plugging in a random negative number to try. We also know that x my excuse me, my y will not be zero. Because if our y was zero, then x would have to be zero. So it's not that one. So we're left to these two options. So I'm gonna go ahead, let's plug in 0 0.9 for y. And let's, let's solve for x. You could plug all of those in, but you kinda wanna do process of elimination to save your time. So let's solve for x. I'm going to do that first by moving this x minus 1 to the other side. So I have 0 0.9 times x minus 1 equals x. Solve that. Minus 0 0.9 equals x. I'm going to move this 1x over to this side and the 0 0.9 to the other side. So what am I left with? I'm going to move up here. Negative 0.1x, those are gone, equals, those are gone, 0 0.9. And again, 0 0.9 divided by negative 0.1 is negative 9. So x would have to equal to negative 9 to get that. And that's not greater than 1. Negative 9 is less than 1. So we can cross that off, and we get letter E. So I hope this helps. Um, feel free to subscribe to my channel for the rest of the pages. It looks like we have um, a, good, a good chunk left. We're about half, we're almost halfway through the test here. So 
Subscribe to my channel. I hope you like this and I hope this helps.